ladies and gentlemen, to this new wonderful video with Alistair. What are we going to do today, Al? Hello there. We are going to learn that, have a crack at literature, read stories and poems, talk about them. them. Yes, exactly. This is what we're going to do today. Um, we're sitting here at the fireplace. And having sure. some minor technical difficulties, I can hear myself right now, so if I haspel around a bit, then please don't be mad at me. I'm trying my best not to go insane by hearing my own voice all the time right now. <laughs> um, yeah, as I was just we're gonna read poems, stories, and talk about them today, and it's basically about literature. We were planning to do a podcast about it, but then no one had time or the muse, and so it's just us two now. It's basically not really planned what we're doing. We're just reading something, talking about it, and let's see how long we can go through until yeah. we have to go pee. Okay, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and Elster will start with um, reading something for us. All right. I have a book. There. Now, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. It's annoying, I know. Once All right. upon a midnight uh, dreary, while I pondered weak, weary, for many a quaint, curious volume forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly nap, suddenly there came a tap, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping my chamber door. Only this. Nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it's in the bleak December, and each separate dying emperor wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow. Sorrow lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden with the angel's name Lenore. Nameless here, forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, is some visitor treating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor treating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, nothing more. Presently, my soul grew stronger. Hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was snapping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce, I was sure I heard, I heard you. Here, I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness, fearing, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. The silence was unbroken. The darkness gave no token. The only word there spoken was the whisper word, Lenore. This whispered, and the echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this. And nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me, burning. Soon again, Soon again I, heard, I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. <laughs> surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what the rat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment as mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here, I flung the shutter. When then, many a flirt and flutter, in their step the stately raven, St. Days of Lenore. Not the least obeyance made him, not a minute stopped, or stayed here, stayed, I mean, but, but the, with a mean of lord, or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched, and sat, nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling, beguiling all, all my sad fancy, fancy smiling, smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the continents it wore. 
go thy crest be shorn and shaven thou, I said, on Shono craven, ghastly grim and ancient rain, watering from the nighty shore. Tell me what thy lording lordly name is on the night's plutonium shore. Quoth Raven, never. Much I marveled this ungainly <laughs> child to hear the score so plain. <laughs> It just God cut out exactly where you said. Uh, you said, quote the raven. Never. <laughs> Damn it. I'll still continue, though, from where I'm left off. Alright. Alright, guys, some technical difficulties. Camera might be slightly different. Who cares? Let's continue. But the raven, sitting lonely on the acid bust, spoke only that one word. As if his soul, in that one word, did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered. Not a feather than he fluttered. Till I scarcely more than muttered. Other ends of Thumbcor. On the morrow, will leave me. It's my hopes alone for. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by fly so aptly spoken. Doubtless, said I. What it utters is its only stock in store, caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed fast, till his song one heard more, till the dinges of his hope that Mercury poured and bore, never, nevermore. But the raven still beguiled all my sad soul into smiling. Straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and busted door, then upon the velvet sinking. I betook myself, myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking of what this ominous bird of yore, this grim, ungainly, goth, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore, meant and broken, nevermore. This I sat, engaged, guessing, but no syllable expressing to the foul, to the fowls whose eyes, fiery eyes, now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining. My head at ease, reclining on the cushion's velvet lining, at the lamp light gloated o'er. But who, but whose velvet light, velvet violet lining, lamps light light gloating o'er? She shall rest. Ah, nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed by an unseen censer, sung by Seraphin, whose footfalls tickled on the tufted floors. Wretch! I cried. Thy God have lent thee, by these angels he have sent thee, respite, respite and the pent thee, from thy memories of Lenore. Lenore. Quaff, oh, oh quaff, quaff this, this kind, kind of pent thee, and, and let, let the, this lost, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. nevermore. Prophet, said I, think of evil! Prophet still of <laughs> bird or devil! Whether tempest sent, or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet undaunted, on the desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still of bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden, it shall clasp a Satan maiden, whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Woe for me. Nevermore. Be that word our sign of bar parting. Bird or fiend, I shrieked upstarting, get thee back into the tempest and the night plutonium shore. Leave no black t black bloom as a token of that lie thy soul has spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting. Still is sitting, still is sitting on the pile of bust of palace just above my chamber door. His eyes of all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, a 
and the lamp-like loaded oars streaming through the shadows on the floor. And my soul, from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor, shall be lifted nevermore. That's the end of the poem. The Raven from Edgar Allan Poe. Very now, nice. let's talk! Very nice. I really hope that everything was able to be heard during the video. Um, I'm going to be pissed if it isn't. It's pretty weird right now. If not, I'm just gonna cut the best lines together. Yeah. Or I'll have to redo it all. I wanted to. No, 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 you don't have to redo it all. Don't worry. Don't worry, so, we're not gonna be this sadistic. Now we talk. Alright, so, uh, Edgar Allan Poe was known to have a little, a very grim way of writing. Like, yeah. He's yes. also known for having pretty much a, much a very, very sorrowful life. A lot of bad things happened to him in his life. Yeah, exactly. And in the end, there was even the conspiracy that he might have been killed. Yeah, it's not completely known how he how died. He died. And that exactly. remains unsolved for the moment. God damn it. <laughs> Yeah. The I really enjoy the poem. Unsolved. Most people... Most people think it's a horror story. I see it more as, like, tragedy, right? More of, like, tragedy and drama, you know? Yeah, it's like um, a trauma that the main protagonist has, and the raven does... Um, um, it's kind of the embodiment trauma. of that. Exactly. Embodies that kind of like fear that he doesn't want to believe in. Yeah, he doesn't want to believe itself, that. This... Like, is it that he will forget yeah. Lenore, or that he will never see her again? Like, what do you think? He, he. I don't think he wants to believe that they're gone. I don't think he wants mm -hmm. to believe that that he's in the like state of like denial, you know, of when it, in the terms of terms of grief. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And that raven is just the harsh truth of that grief and denial. Yee. So now what are we on to? <laughs> so we're going on to something, a story, that has been told within a story. Yeah. <laughs> this is the story of the Deathly Hollows from Harry Potter. Written by yeah. Jake Rowling. Three brothers, traveling along a lonely, winding road, at twilight reached a deep, treacherous river, where anyone who attempted to swim or wade would drown. Learned in the magical arts, the brothers conjured a bridge with their wands and proceeded to cross. Halfway through the bridge, a hooded figure stood before them. The figure was the enraged spirit of death, cheated of his due. Deathy. Oops. Death cunningly pretended to congratulate them and proceeds to award yeah. them with gifts of their own choosing. The eldest brother, a combative man, asked for a wand more powerful than any in existence. Death granted his wish by fashioning the elder wand from a branch of a nearby elder tree standing on the banks of the river. The second brother, an arrogant man, chose to further humiliate Death and asked for the power to recall the deceased from the grave. Death granted his wish by crafting the resurrection stone from a stone picked from the riverbank. The third and youngest brother, who was the most humble and wise, did not trust Death and asked for something enable him to go forth without Death being able to follow. A reluctant Death most unwillingly handed over his own invisibility cloak. The three brothers took their prizes and soon went their separate ways. The eldest brother traveled to a village where a wizard whom he had quarreled lived. He sought a duel and fought the wizard using the wand, instantly killing the latter. Leaving his enemy dead upon the floor, the eldest brother walked to an inn not far from the dueling site and spent the night there. Taken by his conscience and lust over the elder wand's power, the eldest brother boasted of his wand, gifted by death and his own invincibility. That very night, a murderous wizard killed the eldest brother. The unknown murderous wizard crept to the inn as the eldest brother slept, drunk from wine. The wizard slit the oldest brother's throat for good measure and stole the wand. That was when death took the first brother for his own. The second
second brother returned to his home, where he lived alone. Turning the stone thrice in hand, the figure of the girl he had once hoped to marry before her ultimately death, untimely death, appeared at once before him, much to his delight. Yet she was sad and cold, separated from him as bee by whale. Though she had returned to the mortal world, she did not truly belong there and suffered. Finally, the second brother, driven mad with hopeless longing, committed suicide by hanging from his house balconies, so as truly to join her. That was when Death took the second brother for his own. Death searched for the youngest brother as years passed, but never succeeded. It was only when the third brother reached a great age he took off the cloak of invisibility and gave it to his son. Greeting Death as an old friend, they departed with life as equals. The end of that story. Yeah. I, I like what the I story find so like... fascinating. Yeah, I find so fascinating, but it's a story inside a story. Which yeah. explains um, something. Like, we have it very often in mediums that someone is telling a story in some kind of manner, like, hey, I've been there, you should have seen that he killed those guys and stuff, you know, telling something Yo, about a man. person so you know something. You should have seen done. that fucking murder last night, man. <laughs> Anyway, they are like, you know, um, like, when, like, for example, yeah. a, a guy walks into a bin, uh, into an inn. Yeah. And one mm -hmm. guy says something, so we know what this character is known about. Yeah. Or, for example, in Rango, when everyone is like, t s uh, is like dropping little hints about Rattlejake Snow and stuff, you know, so we can get a <laughs> knowledge about his character a little. I'm yeah. sorry, did you say Rattles Jake Snow? <laughs> that's, what, that's what I heard you say. I might have been going no, crazy. No, 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 no. I said uh, Rango. You said I heard Snow in there. You said Snow. Rattle Jake Snow. Rattle Jake Joe. Ah! Snake. Rattle Jake Snake, Snake Joe. Damn it, I fucked this two up. You're right. <laughs> you did. Rattle Snake Joe. Rattle Snake Joe. Yeah. Rattle Jake Just Snow. say Jake. Just say Jake. like Jake. Yeah. Yeah, I mix up the J and the Snow from from J from <laughs> Snake and Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Back in your seat. Take a anyway. seat. <laughs> but this story is an actual fairy tale yeah. which tells something. Yeah. Which is later gonna be a big part of a movie slash book. You know, book of yeah. all. Yeah. And it's pretty interesting to me. I love it. Yeah, I like how the la I like the story of like how the three brothers like were different from like how they all handled this, and most of the in, in the last it's like, like kind, kind of, of like, like the three, three little, little pigs, pigs, right? In, in a way, way where like, like there's the two yeah, brothers right. who make their who make like do the stupid like thing, and then last brother does something smart. You know? You know? Yeah, exactly. Except, and it's also like. It's not only the three little pigs. There was so like once a story in the Bible in which they, um, yeah. in which one was building a church, his house on sand. One was building it on dirt, and yeah. one was building it on stone and something. And then the and then flood came, and the two houses were swept away. Yeah. And the third one wasn't and something. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember the entire story, but this this concept of a story of three people and the one of yeah. them, the last one being like the smartest one, is like. Uh, very often yeah. taken. Yes, yes, yes. Yeet! Yeet. Alright. So... Now we gotta think of something else to... Hold on. Gotta improvise. improvise okay, improvise. Something. Let's go. So let's talk about something um, which I have on my list here. Yeah. I mean, I do not have the book itself or anything of him, but um, I've never written... I mean, I've never read anything of him. But you have, I think. So we can talk about yeah. this a little. So let's talk about H.P. Lovecraft. Yes. I read one of his stories. Um, it was um, The Call of Cthulhu. It was, it was a short story put on a, ma on a magazine. It's a long one, I will say, kind of. Not really. Short for most of his work, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, let's talk about it. All right, very good. You there? Okay, I thought you died. <laughs> <laughs> Probably don't even, I don't even know if that works. 
Oh I don't god, think you cannot even see my face. Well, you can't even- we can't even look at you, Ree. We can't. You're, you're gonna cause everyone to go mad. <laughs> okay, 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 I'm turning back alone. Yeah. So... So, I, I'm gonna let you talk first about, like, Lovecraft's work. I'll let you, cause you know the least. God damn it. Uh, okay, so what I do know is that um, the main foundation of the works are these outerworldly beings, which are kind of aliens, I think, but also kind of interdimensional. And yeah, and there have been multiple cults on the Earth and stuff which worship them. And although these creatures themselves never really make appearances, um, they're all it's all resolves around them somehow. It was it a good summary of someone who never actually read anything? Somewhat, I'd say. Where <laughs> okay, let go on, I'd please. say it's like, um, it's a big universe where there's just so much that it's kind of hard to comprehend it all. And it's the ideas of, like, these things humans can't really comprehend. And, like, one of the, like, the big ones that are, like, Cthulhu, we know him. He's not the most powerful yeah. one, but he's the most worshipped. And like, also, he's, but he's if more someone like a says H.P. Lovecraft, then someone is going to say, "Yeah, Cthulhu." Cthulhu. I cannot speak his name. Anyway, um, he's... well, yeah, that's that's what his name's supposed to be. H.P. Lovecraft made it to where it's not supposed to be like pronounceable in humans, and we just all kind of like, decide. <laughs> yeah, it's like not, you know. So like yeah, a lot get, of people get, believe in him. Cthulhu, I read the story, I enjoyed it, I love the formatting where it's kind of like a file, almost, of like, events from people. Like, you, you'd you have to read the read, and you'd see what I'm talking about. Pretty okay. good, I like it. So I don't know like, all of it. called? Yeah? Um, uh, there's this other god, um, called H Hastur, I think? God of... Yeah. Stories or something, if I remember. And his name is pronounceable, like, I wonder why. Well, no, it's just Cthulhu. Like, I don't know if... The, I'm okay. pretty sure all of them are... I don't know all of his work, so don't take my word completely to, to heart. heart. Or if you're, if you're like, like, a lot of crap, crap, like, just like, read one of them and I enjoyed, and I enjoyed it. it. And I will mm -hmm. say, I, Cthulhu, Cthulhu did appear in the story, story Ray. I'll, I'll tell you that. that. Spoilers, but it's not a it's not a spoiler because that's been around for a while. He does appear. Uh, tell me out. There's this word mm -hmm. for that actually. Um, uh, Lovecraftian horror, or what is that horror called again? Like this horror of the unknown. The Cthulhu myth. Um, the Cthulhu mythos. There is a special me. Um, there's a special um name for that. Hold on, I'm, I'm like googling Cthulhu, it right now. Mythos? The Cthulhu Mythos? The um, Lovecraft Mythos? I think it's called Lovecraftian Horror. Um... Do you mean like the Elseworth, like, kind of... Cosmic Horror, yeah. Yeah, Cosmic Horror in, like, accordance to everything that we humans do not understand. Yeah. Which, I think that is, like, one of the heart... Lovecraft did that stuff really well, like, with the stories, because it's very hard to make something that is just sounds, like, incomprehensible to exist. It's not easy. But, but also, also, I'm gonna, gonna let, let you guys, guys know, know, we- yes, we know. He, Lovecraft was kind of a dickhead. We all know he was a racist. Yes, that is something that is not good, really not good. Yeah. There is always the conflict about when a uh, creator does something, yeah. Um, does that mean that you cannot like his work anymore? Like, for example, there well, I don't has think been so. some People... instance... I, I, I don't think so, because some, like, Michael Jackson may have done something that I, I don't want to mention, because, you know... Uh -huh. But people still listen to his music, right? People still see yeah, him as, like, the king of pop. Or, for example, so, You like, can like I'm a man's a few... work, but, like, like you don't have to like huge drama place. around a musician as well. Where someone, yeah. where he was like doing shit, and then yeah. lots of people were saying, "How can you still listen to that music of this kind of stuff? Like you know what he did." And yeah, I yeah. know it's a it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty complicated topic. 
it, it's complicated, but like Lovecraft like was very interesting. He's also kind of a weird weirdo. But I think that's yeah. just most writers, right? I think most Like do you know what are... he was writing before his cosmic horror phase? Uh no, I don't remember. Don't remember. It's about um it was something about a dreamland in which is yeah, even dreamland. weirder than, it was even weirder than the things he wrote before. Yeah. Yeah, very yeah. strange. Alright. Um do we have any more segments to talk about? I think we're finished with the Lovecraft section. Yeah, of Lovecraft. There is one thing that I still want to talk about, which is a completely different way of storytelling. Which yeah. is not even actually storytelling, but um, it's also very fitting because you said files before. Alistair. Oh, you are you gonna say I think yes, you're gonna say I think we all gonna, know. Like, hold a 180 on Alright, let's say it together. Three, two, yeah. one. Three. One. The SCP SCP Foundation. Foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Where? All right. So. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you say what it is, Al? You know it. So, best. the SCP Foundation is a website uh, for creators. SCP Foundation means secure, contain, contain protect. protect. It's pretty much a land where people make a story on, like, well, not a story, but they make a document about a creature that ex that could exist in this un that SCP universe. And there's just a big variety of it, I will say. Yeah. Yes, so, exactly. You, yeah. You could say what you so want to say. So it's basically a huge community project. Where yeah, anyone say can so. take part in. Yeah, anyone. I could if I wanted to. You could. Exactly. If one of the viewers out there probably could. It, yeah, you could. You just actually have to have to go on the SCP website, and there you can like make a new entry. Yeah. There are of anything. thousand. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah. are objects. I don't there think at the There are yeah. just phenomenons and stuff. Like that's all an SCP. Everything that's unnatural and stuff that's called SCP. And the SCP Foundation is this fictional foundation which is containing all of these things in order for us humans to live a fucking normal life. Yeah. At the moment, you can't go at yes. the website I tried. I think, like, something's going on with Wikidub, where ha there's hackers or something. But, like, you can look at videos, at least, about SCPs. They're pretty good. Exactly. You can even have real-life stuff. Like, there are so yeah, many yeah. SCPs. To, to name just, like, one which yeah. is very well known, like, for example, like, the Plague Doctor. Um... Yeah, 049, one of my favorites. Yeah, that, as you can see by the number already, um, all SCPs have a number, and the names which have been given yeah. are actually more nicknames. Yeah, from like, you can say the Foundation, I think people probably use them because there because are, there are humans, humans, humans back there. Exactly. Um, and like, you could even have, like, Cthulhu-like stuff there. Like, not everything is contained, I will say that. There is classes, there's like safe which is like it doesn't mean it's not dangerous it means it's just easy to contain it doesn't try to escape much and there's a euclid yes. which is where it starts to get more like they're going to try to escape more teeter um where they escape a hell of a lot i forget the name of this class but there's like a class where it's god entities that pretty much cannot be contained like it's impossible i forgot that too right now um, and then there's Thaumiel, which, if I remember correctly, means, like, SCPs that somehow can help the Foundation and they use resources from the creature. Like, SCP-3000, uh, the Anantasesha, Anantases you know? Yeah. Which is a giant eel, which is also a favorite of mine. I love that. Giant eels. I like Nessie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, this is like a kilometer-sized eel, Re. Ew. <laughs> it's massive. Okay, um, okay. Wanna add more stuff about SCP, or...? Yeah? I think, um, all we would like to say right now is, like, that it's a very interesting and creative new way to, um, at least back when it started, was a new yeah. way of storytelling, of creators to is. express it's... themselves. Yeah, like, it's rare yeah. to see something like this. It's written I... in, um, um, scientific articles more than a yeah. story type of like thing. Like a story. There there can be, like, like logs about something that happened at the Foundation with these, like, you know, incident logs, like, where the creature exactly. escapes or something. 
No. Sometimes I'm in these logs. There are like, for example, also logs of if someone found this SCP and wrote something about it in his diary, yeah. then that can be in there. Then that's in a story um, style. Or, or he was but interviewed. In diary style. Yeah. Or yeah, and then all of a sudden like the next awesome. log is all of a sudden in a completely different style again. That's that's what makes it so interesting. And not everything is revealed. There are like redacted things where you, we don't know everything about them usually. There's usually something hidden about these creatures, like indeed down to like, the foundation what they look itself, like. it's blurred or something because it wants to like create the effect that it's only for higher ranks to know. Or if it is something that even the foundation doesn't know about the creatures yet. Yeah. Like there's one where you can't even know the description of it or else it's gonna fucking get you. No? I don't remember I don't remember its number or if it has a number. And I don't know I will... what you're talking about right now. I only know the one yeah. which you cannot even see on a picture, it comes kill you. Uh you mean uh Shy Guy? Yeah, uh, exactly. That's guy. And just to let yeah. everyone know, I in case there's like some SCP noobs out there, which I'd be surprised. Not all SCPs are dangerous. Not all of them are monsters. And please also we'll note that. that I'm saying is right here and now, the SCPs are not real. <laughs> so if any younger people are watching know. this, then go on the fucking website where it actually looks like it's a fucking professional website. It doesn't exist. It's only a project. Well, it can be based off somewhat a true event. Not entirely. Like Sorry. there are. It is not real. I don't want it's, to create it's not the illusion. Real. It's, okay, I know you. it. It's not real. That's what I'm saying. It's just like, you know, some details are going to be based off something. Everything is yeah. kind of based off something, I'd say. Of course. I wonder Every to, story I ever told be, has once happened yeah. in some way, for real. Yeah. I want there to, I want be, there to like, be like a TV, TV show, show on SCP. SCP. That'd, That'd be awesome. That would be amazing. Not a movie, because cool. that, that wouldn't work. A TV show, you, you can, can like, like try, do a lot better. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, any more sec- uh, we got another segment going on now? I think we're good on yes, the SCP segment. Th there is one more offer which I want to talk about. And it is, is not it? the make of Lord of the Rings, because that is such an old topic yeah. and everybody knows about it. And, yeah. um... Is so... It, is it who I think it is? Who do you think it is? Is it Terry Pratchett? Yes! It's Terry Pratchett! I knew it. I, I knew he was going to be mentioned somewhere. Yes. Terry Pratchett, the creator of Discworld. And many and other this, stories, I'm pretty sure. That's uh, well, his all his one, stories you know. are taking place in Discworld, almost. Yeah. I, I'm i I'm, I'm going to take the side that Rewa is on the, the HP Lovecraft. I have not read most of the Terry Pratchett's work. I have not... I am right so now looking you know. for something. Okay, I, I don't want to make the... Um, um, I don't want to say the names wrongly, so I'm, I googled it real quick. So. Okay. Great Atuin is the great star turtle of the species Genis Galactica, who travels through space, carrying the four giant elephants named Barilla, Tubal, Great Tafoon, and Jedakin, who in turn carry the disc world. This turtle, on which back are the elephants, on which back is the disc world, a flat world with no horizon, is the setting of Terry Pratchett's stories and novels and tales. The disc world yeah. is a world on which anything that people believe in can become reality, as per se there is, for example, a literal death there with a capital D. The Grim yeah, Reaper, yeah. so to say. Oh, in the... Was it a TV show or a movie? It, it was both, but a death both. Play by Blake there Ray is a, Lee. Yeah, there is a TV show. Then there is like yeah. a cartoon movie called Soul Music. And then yeah. there is um the, the live the action movie. Right? The live action movie, exactly. Yeah. Um Hawkfather. Basically Which, um, um yeah. Basically there is magic on this world, but also science. And one of, I, am, I can say one of the there is there are so many characters in Terry Pratchett's story, and the way he writes them is so interesting. Like he really describes every 
every single thing they do with their eyebrows, with their hands and stuff. Yeah. And he also yeah. interrupts the um, when they talk, for example, in order to say. So now they're moving their hands and stuff, you know, like so you can really have the entire scene. Yeah. It's very, very interesting art style. And, very interesting and from what style. I know, the narration changes with characters, from what I remember. Like, exactly you can have, like, that. a character who speaks, like, calmly or nicely, and then there's ones that are more, like, slurry, you know, like, you know, like, here I was. You know? So here was? Should you guys head off? Wait. <laughs> so, um, you know what? You don't want to go to dwell, That'd should be... you? <laughs> anyway, I'm <continue. laughs> I would like to talk about, um, two characters. Although one of those characters is multiple characters. Um, the first one is the multiple characters and um, they're called the Auditors of Reality, which are very often the antagonists. The Auditors of Reality are basically what govern the physical laws and what we continue to call science, also in our universe. They hate humans because human uh, fantasy can, as I said before, in this world make things become real. And that adds chaos, and that is something that the Orders of Reality hate. And so they often try to make things happen so humans stop believing in things, or that humans stop existing altogether, and that's often something. However, there are also yeah. a lot of things where they do not appear, because Terrible has written a lot of um, stories where there are smaller tales, which are not on a universal or worldly scale. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah the second yeah, yeah, one... Yeah, yeah, yeah is my favorite character and I'm pretty sure that all of you maybe know if you ever heard from Terry Pratchett you then bring connection to this and that is Death as I said before you talked about him before yeah yeah who in Death the with a capital D who lives in a house and has a horse named Binky <laughs> 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 and has a granddaughter yeah, yeah. um <laughs> Because Death once adopted um, a daughter, and she then got a granddaughter, and the dynamic between the two is very interesting in the stories. Death knowing that everything has to die and that um, he has to do his job, yet it is very amusing that Death, with a capital D in Terry Pratchett's stories, is the one who shows the most sympathy for humans, and very often is the one who tries to yeah. defend them to protect them. In a quote yeah. which I would like to say right now, between the between Def and his granddaughter Susan, it was right after they managed to rescue the Hawkfather, which is the Discworld Santa Claus, and yeah. Susan asks this. I'm gonna try to make like different voice impressions so you know when when is when who is gonna talk. <laughs> So tell me, what would have happened if you wouldn't have saved him? The sun would not have risen. So then what would have happened? Instead, a mere ball of flaming gas would have eliminated the world. Or I'm not stupid. You're saying that humans need fantasy to cope with things, to make things bearable. No. Humans need fantasy to be human. To be. to be the place where the rising apes meets the falling angel. As a startup, you need to learn to believe the little lies. So we can then believe the big ones. Yeah. Yes, justice, mercy, duty, yes, that mercy, kind of thing. Enough, enough, enough. <laughs> Am I taking the story? <laughs> <coughs> no, you're not. <laughs> You're reading. Then not the same at all. <laughs> you think so? Then grind the universe down to its finest powder and sieve it through the finest sieve, and then show me one atom of justice, one molecule of mercy. One and yet molecule. you humans still believe that there is some grand order to the universe, some righteousness by which it must be judged. But people must believe in that. If not, what should we believe in? You I must believe in must things believe that aren't true. That are not true. How else can How they else become? Could I become? And that is a 
very, very nice thing which yeah. Dev said, which I love very much. You have to believe in things that aren't true, how else can they become? It copes with everything. As long as we believe in something, we can do it. That is what we humans do. Yeah, Kento. Yeah. Christopher yeah. Lee. Yes, that's also because and Death was um, voiced by Christopher Lee in the cartoon movie Soul Music. And, the, and it's and the glorious. Live the live I action, no. Live he was not voiced by Christopher Lee in the live action. Uh. But Christopher Lee as Death, absolutely best pick ever. Yeah. Yeah, that man rest is amazing. Rest, rest, rest in, in peace, peace was amazing. Christopher Lee. Good man. Yeah. Rip in peace. Rest in peace in peace. Rest in rip. Rest in rest in um, peace. Yes, the lollipop man. Rest in peace. Lollipop. You have an appointment? Um. We have um another segment or er, row. <laughs> no, I think this is a pretty good ending. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You must believe in things that aren't true. How else can they become? And I would like you all to implore that you think about the fact that every story ever written somehow once happened in some way and if it only be in one person's head so imagination is a great yeah. thing so go out there and imagine create maybe stories may be something completely different create your own story it is your story and that makes it great thank you very much Alistair you want to so say please, something ladies and gentlemen stay tuned <laughs> Like a fucking LED light bulb in here. <laughs> 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 <laughs>